Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for the final day of the digital ITP PM week 2020. So with uh, today's session, we bring to a close a week of industry engagement with the next generation of IT professionals in Sri Lanka. I believe the knowledge sharing sessions this week has given some great insights into the industry in Sri Lanka to all the undergraduates who took the initiative to join us. Though the digital IT BPM week come, uh, comes to an end today, we will be continuing our technical webinars on topics such as automation, AI uh, through a uh, forum of SLASCOM. And please uh, join us in our social media platforms to get to know about these technical webinars which is happening right throughout the week. Yeah. And I wish to thank all our knowledge partners who contributed their time in making the first ever digital IT week a success. So this event would not have been possible without your contribution. Um, further, I must thank the team at EDB, ICTA and FITIS for making this collaboration possible. And last but not least, I wish I wish to thank the team at SLASCOM who put in a lot of time and effort in making the digital IT BPM Week 2020 a reality. Without any further ado, let me invite the moderator and one of the speakers of the panel discussion, Anura D. Alvis. Uh, I hope uh, yeah, you're there. So over to you, sir. You can continue. Thank you so much, Harry. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good evening to all uh, joining once again. Thanks for EDB, uh, SLASCOM, ICTA as well as FITIS for organizing this event with the knowledge partners we have, some of them on the panel discussion as well. Uh, let me first uh, introduce myself. I'm Anuradi Alvis. Uh, I'm having some speaking part here as well as on the uh, moderation of this uh, whole discussion. And I'm the CEO of Pixel. And uh, prior to that, I've uh, involved in many uh, startups and innovations. Uh, let me now turn to uh, Mr. Anura Dizanaika, who is the, uh, mini the Secretary for, Honorable Secretary for Ministry of Higher Education, Technology and Innovation, with his very busy schedule. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us today, because without you, this wouldn't have been a full forum. Thank you so much. And secondly, we have Madhu Ratnayaka, who has been an industry uh, leader and has been with Virtusa from private company to today's state of a public large enterprise. Madhu Ratnayaka is the executive vice president and CIO of the Virtuosa Group, and he has many other positions. And more importantly, Madhu has involved in industry as well as in the university at different levels of curriculum refinery, as well as on different other areas of curriculum development in university. So he has a very strong bond. Uh, thanks Madhu for joining. Let me now turn to, uh, Professor Lalit Gamage, he's very well known to those who have been from Morotu University, has been in the university history, is coming from public university, now it's on his own private university, very successful entrepreneur, he's a president, CEO of SLIIT, and there's another one more important thing why Lalit is here, Lalit also is a board member of ICTA. So Lalit represents that as well, there will be some very important information that he will share uh, with regard to that as well. So thank you so much, Professor Lalit Kamagi. Let me turn to uh, Charles. Charles Eugene is the, one of the senior lecturers and prior to that, he's the head of the department in ICT in Jaffna University. He's been having a lot of research experience and working with students and relationships for a long time. Been a known person in the IT industry, particularly in the Jaffna, and we want to make sure that we have the right forum here and uh, thank you, Charles, for accepting again, uh, Dr. Charles Eugene from Jaffna, University of Jaffna. Finally, to you, yeah. Hasita, who has been a very, very uh, accommodative most of the requests these days coming from schools, higher education, ministries, government, private enterprises. Hasita, you take us in a long journey from coming as a, coming as a Microsoft country manager. Uh, Hasita Abhivadan is the um, country manager for Microsoft Sri Lanka and also Maldives. He's here as a, a complete ecosystem partner and how he's going to help the universities, industry, and the government in this journey. Uh, with that, I have a little preamble. I wanted to bring everyone to a context of why we are having this discussion. Like Harry, a director of uh, SLASCOM board, explained a while ago, we need to understand with this pandemic, everyone is talking about organizations, and they all talk about how they 
go this journey together and how do we develop ourselves, employees, all of that. But there is a very important part that has not been addressed so far. So we decided to address that together with Slashcom, ICTA, EDB and FITIS. That is about the university graduates, undergraduates, the parents who are seeking their children to be admitted to the university. What is going to be their future? What is going to happen after this? Will they have a, a journey that they can continue with ICT or is ICT going to be a blind end for them? So I'm, I'm not going to answer any of that, but I'm going to give you some facts. The facts are very critical to understand before you jump into this conversation. Quickly, there's something called Global Resilient Index for those students and, and for parents and those who are joining just to explain quickly, the Global Resilient Index is prepared by a large risk management company called FM Global. They actually tell every year which country is resilient, which country is more uh, ready for taking over these kind of pandemics or disasters and continue. In that ranking, Sri Lanka was ranked in 83rd position, whereas uh, Norway was ranked number one position. Let's give you, and, and also uh, in the 10th uh, position, USA. Now that tells how Sri Lanka's resilience to a disaster and this kind of situation. But if you look at COVID situation today, Sri Lanka is in 100th position. Actually, it has been 130, now 100. But if you look at Norway, Norway is in 53rd position. And USA is in number two, number three position. Now, this will bring a big question. How come globally, as risk point of view, when the countries are recognized that, that, but they execute the plans differently and they go to very dangerous positions in terms of how they handle the pandemic? The simple reason why Sri Lanka is actually much ahead of them is because three factors. How government took the initiatives, the leadership, industry, and of course, the most important part here that is applicable for universities and the private and public education institutes. They come forward, they put the plan, and that is why we are doing much better management of this situation. Now you understand, A, why Sri Lanka is better in a high level, and secondly, why the universities, industries, the government get together, and we are trying to manage this situation, not only for business, but also for the universities and the education sector. With that note, I'll be turning to Madhu. Madhu, uh, Given the current situation, I know that you are heavily involved with different uh, areas, the government and ICTA and industry. But in terms of the, uh, the universities and education, uh, what, do you, what is your response to how we should react as an industry? Uh, are, are you also looking at downturn of this industry or are you looking at upturn or is there opportunities? What is your first response to this situation, Madhu? Thanks, Anurag. Um, first of all, I hope everybody is safe and uh, staying home and, and thanks for inviting uh, me to speak with you guys today. And I think it's unprecedented times, right? We haven't uh, seen an uh, uh, event of this scale in the history of our lifetime. The last one happened a long while ago. And I think, uh, you know, that puts a lot of things into perspective. In, in, you know, how we should be looking at moving forward, right? I think one thing which is, uh, while there's a lot of uh, challenges in many countries, uh, one of the things I think fundamentally happening is, which is moving to us, is that more people are getting into digital work, whether it's a digital learning or remote or to uh, collaboration like this, you know, think about this uh, meeting that we are having today. We have thousand plus people, and we wouldn't have think about doing this, uh, you know, uh, three months ago, right? And then we wouldn't have, you know, this wouldn't have happened, right? So the longer that uh, I think we are in lockdown, I think the technology will start adapting faster, right? People will come up with more and new and innovative ways to really get over uh, connecting us, right? We've seen that world has all of a sudden uh, connected itself much more closely because of this, because the technology had enabled that, right? If you think about, there are two big things that we need to worry about in a pandemic, right? One is the uh, uh, lives, obviously we have to protect lives and the second one is protecting the livelihoods, right? If you think about lives, our, our medical professionals are getting out there and getting in front and saving livelihoods, uh, saving the lives and the livelihoods today are largely saved by technology, right? And the IT, IT guys are the ones who are 
really making sure the companies work and and and, and really in operation businesses work governments work so you know you you think of it in a pandemic like this you know our medical uh, professionals our heroes and the next heroes are really the protecting livelihood which are it guys right at least for 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 our kind of work so i think there is uh, uh, it's creating a new uh, uh, new demand for technology, right? It's creating an accelerating demand. If you look at banking, for example, right? You know, there's a significant shift in people moving to digital bank. In fact, there's about 21% new, net new people are getting into digital banking in the last like uh, eight weeks, right? So, so many areas, if you technology, entertainment, everybody's going digital, right? There's a, there's interesting saying, saying, uh, you know, who drives your digital transformation, whether it's uh, your CEO, CIO, or COVID, right? As clearly COVID is accelerating a lot of uh, digital transformation, that's creating demand for uh, professionals with technology expertise, right? I think this is, uh, this is probably a golden opportunity uh, for to, to companies to adopt technology to reduce costs and increase revenue. At the same time, people like us and, and a lot of the students and who are on the call today uh, to create more opportunities and with remote work, obviously now all of a sudden, you know, you don't need to travel your, your opportunities will become significantly higher, even globally. And even if you come to Sri Lanka, you know, we, we had a lot of the jobs for IT jobs were concentrated around Colombo, right? You know, and now we can go to whether it's a Jeff now or Candy or Goal, it's be a lot easier that people have mindset have changed, right? The technology has really paved the way. So I think, uh, I'm, I'm very optimistic. I think there will be tremendous amount of demand. Obviously, there will be short, a short term lull when everybody is kind of watching and seeing what's happening. Uh, there will be a, 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 a lull period when every company is trying to adjust with any shock, right? As with any shock, people take a, a pause, right? And before they kind of up, uh, come up, but the technology certainly has, uh, industry is very resilient. We've seen things like global financial crisis. We've seen the dot-com crash. And through any, all this, uh, you know, fairly significant global scale uh, disasters, technology kind of uh, came in to save the day and, and to really help accelerate the livelihoods and the economies, right? So I think, I think it's, it's, it's very important that uh, uh, we take, we understand that and, and we, we see that future. And our strategy as an industry is to really use this time to accelerate, right? And, and, and I'll give you one example and close. You know, when, a, uh, when we drive, when we come to a bend, what we do is we put the brakes of a car to slow down and take the bend safe, right? But uh, if you look at a race car driver, when they come into a bend, uh, they accelerate, right? And it's called drifting the car. You essentially, you accelerate and, and then you're, what you're really looking at is how do you get out of the bend with a higher momentum, right? It's called drifting the curve. And I think this is exactly what we are trying to do. How do we really accelerate and drift the curve and come out of this pandemic with really be, uh, Sri Lanka and, and becoming a uh, even more important in the global scale of uh, you know, digital transformation that the whole world will go through and Sri Lanka will go through. I think there's a fantastic opportunity uh, for us uh, in the coming years. You're on mute, Anurag. Two points that you highlighted, I will, thanks Madhu. Uh, two points you highlighted. One is about the drifting the curve. I'll come back to that later. The second thing is about the supply and the demand. And you, you said that, uh, and you believed firmly that this is the best time and we should not, uh, we should not worry kind of thing. But I'm, I'm taking the side of the parents and the students and, and the, the social kind of problem. And now I'm turning that, piggybacking Madhu's, that, that angle or the, or the, or the aspect to Charles and ask this question. Charles, uh, you're, Dr. Charles, you're representing uh, one of the government universities, one of the key universities in Sri Lanka, University of Jaffna, which is a great history. And in terms of, even though the industry say this, in terms of students' life, in terms of the education system in the university, do you think that this is a situation that you are concerned and, and as a management, as administration, or you want to tighten the num marks and get, get less number of students? Are you going to respond to what industry or Madhu said uh, and, and make sure the numbers are high? Or you, what is your, what, how are you trying to strike the balance here? Yeah, thank you, Anurag. Uh, so good afternoon to all the panelists and the uh, audience and the uh, organizers. Um, for this uh, question, say, I agree with uh, Madhu. This is an opportunity for us. 
not only opportunity, <clears throat> the, the, uh, the, the frequency and the severity of these pandemics are accelerating. Say, if you, if you look at the last five, 10 years, it's uh, the bird flu, then the Ebola, and now this uh, COVID-19. Uh, so we need to be prepared for the next one. And um, the education can, uh, is the only way to sustain us. And as Madhu said, say, uh, we have to see this as an opportunity, uh, especially uh, these two, three months, um, we have the experience we got from these last two months. Uh, it shows us how we're going to, uh, how we need to go, uh, say, move forward. Um, I, I, let me share uh, two screenshots. Um, Yeah, this is uh, the, the, the online learning um, in the last, uh, I think, uh, yeah, in the last, say from March 23. Uh, so the user logins are two, uh, yeah, two million, right? And the number of user sections is uh, 95 million, right? And this is the, uh, the learning management system access by the, uh, the students in, in all the universities in Sri Lanka. Uh, and uh, one more thing is uh, the, yeah, you can, can see the screen, right? Oh, sorry, I, I missed the screen. Yeah, this is the, um, the Zoom meetings via the university, uh, academics and students conducted over the last, say from March, uh, May 16 to May 23. So at some points it's 20,000 users at, at some times. And uh, say on average, there were 10,000 users from uh, say from 6 p.m. to uh, roughly right, 7 p.m. right? Or even sometimes it goes up to 10 p.m. And uh, so this is the uh, learning management system usage of the uh, students in all the state universities. Uh, say roughly it's uh, 2 million of the user logins and uh, 95 million actions. Uh, <clears throat> so this give us uh, the, uh, what is the way we need to uh, move forward. Uh, especially, uh, The demand, yeah, we, you said about the demand and uh, 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 the institutions need to be um, operate continuously even uh, with a harsh lockdown. So they need to have a remote working capability so that the IT can only uh, provide that capability. So, so I have she, she shown you these two uh, graphs. Those were able uh, because of the IT capabilities we already had in the state universities. Uh, so this um, need to be continued, and um, uh, so I see this. Uh, this is going to be a, a greater demand for IT professionals um, in terms of um, management information system for the institutions, state, or private, uh, in the in, inside the country and outside, as well as IT related uh, professionals. Uh, there should be a greater demand, and uh, the move. The problem here is how are we going to uh, achieve this. So there is going to be a demand, but how are we going to achieve this? So one way is uh, continuing this um, this new learn pattern. So in the last two months, we have uh, sustained our teaching activities to some extent. So keep it, keep the momentum going, and keep it part of the uh, learning activities. Uh, Skill-based activities can be incorporated as an e-learning one in on top of the the regular learning. Uh, so, especially English, IT, and uh, uh, communication skills. So, these can be uh, conducted as an e-learning, uh, e-learning, on top of the regular learning activities. So, students can um, learn on their own uh, on free time. So, we can get the um, top people from the country, and we can organize the these um, e-learning sessions. Yeah, that one thing. And uh, how the industry can help us. So we already, we have, uh, we are conducting a course unit, it's called uh, Emerging Trends in Technology. So 
So we are conducting with the help of industry professionals. So we are doing it through online. This is for our second year students. It's uh, it's very much appreciated by the students and very much very well attended and it's going on. So from uh, this month onwards, we were conducting this. So we can accommodate this type of course units in, in our curriculum uh, to make our graduates uh, ready for the industry. And uh, uh, I, I think this would be uh, our strategy to overcome this, uh, the problem facing at this moment. At the same time, we have to be concerned about something because whether this technology is acceptable, uh, it's reachable for all the students. So working on that, say how we can accommodate or we can join all the students within uh, within this journey without leaving any one of the students. They have uh, financial problems or the, the technology, say some student area in uh, students, uh, they don't have a proper internet connection. So we were trying to do um, our best to incorporate them as well. So that's it. Thanks, Dr. Charles. And I think uh, you're endorsing what uh, Madhu from industry say and, and what I was trying to elaborate on the first. Uh, Professor Lalit, uh, Lalit, I'm turning to you. Uh, the question here is that, again, uh, taking a lead from what Charles is saying that, no, it's an opportunity for universities, but of course, uh, when you say an opportunity, that's always because there is a downturn in the economies and downturn in recruitment and downturn in what we do at industry and university both. So taking that into consideration, how do you think uh, the private university sector in terms of how the students and, and their financial and the social uh, impact to their lives? That's number one. Number two is that is this practical, uh, the demand, if the demand goes high or if the demand goes down, how to manage this situation? Are you, are you ready for managing this, uh, Lalit, as a private? I, mean, I know you can represent uh, that as well as from the point of view, both. But are you ready and do you think the private universities are ready to take this challenge, both managing the short-term pressure and long-term capacity? Okay. Um... I think I will uh, thank you very much for inviting me again. Thanks, uh, Anurag, and thanks, uh, uh, EDB and the organizers. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, I think the, the answer is, uh, uh, sorry, um, the question is rather, you know, how do we manage this kind of problems? I think I must tell you, uh, as a non-state institution, uh, you know, we don't have the luxury of you know, getting the salaries at the end of the month uh, by, given by someone else, right? So we have to finance ourselves. So in fact, uh, when, the, um, um, uh, when the problems occurred during, uh, you know, April last year, uh, we uh, decided to have alternate ways of, uh, you know, delivering our programs. So that is, so we were, kind of prepared when this happened. So we decided to, you know, deliver um, all our uh, lectures uh, through online means. And we started doing that on the 18th of uh, March. And we, in fact, did not lose a single day of classes. Uh, this is why we had a discussion with Mr. Amrit Sanayak as well. You know, how, I mean, how do we, you know, accommodate this kind of, you know, changes in a, kind of a fixed framework is something that we're, so the you know the systems will also need to be flexible to adopt to you know uh, you know changes like this so in fact uh, then came the exams then people were asking whether exams could be uh, you know conducted online but if you look at if you take uh, you know uh, best practices from all over the world whether it is cambridge university or stanford university or harvard this is the method that you know that, that they have adopted, right? So the method is to deliver online and either online exams, take home exams, uh, you know. And today, technology is there, you know, to check whether a person is cheating or not, right? You can very confidently because you have their previous uh, assignments, their previous exams, right? If someone else is writing, you have artificial intelligence with it. you have tools to check whether someone is. So, you know, that is how we have managed uh, the situation and students have not lost anything and we are currently holding exams for all our students. And it is very encouraging to see that 
uh, for certain exams, uh, you know, we have about 98% participation. And for the lowest one, we have got this 92%. So, so, so I think we are challenging. I think the other question that you are asking is about, okay, well, you are producing these graduates and what about their future, right? And I think as graduates, we have gone through all kinds of, you know, difficulties. Uh, and uh, as others, uh, Madhu and Charles spoke, I think these are temporary things, right? Uh, obviously, if there, is a, if there is a delay in getting uh, employment, I think there are other things that the graduates could do. One thing is, you know, uh, you know, you can do postgraduate programs. You can get involved in research. You can start up your own company, right? And as an institute, uh, we have an incubator. We provide even funds for our, you know, good graduates to start their own companies and also to prototype what they have developed during their, you know, undergraduate time. So there are research grants that students could apply and, you know, work with the staff to develop, you know, solutions or, uh, you know, innovative uh, products. The other thing is, I think uh, we have been talking with uh, industry as well, um, uh, Slascom and also FITIS, to provide some sort of industry orientation. When, as you know, uh, you know, when a fresh graduate is recruited, you need to uh, give them, you know, an orientation or training so that he could, you know, be productive. So why don't we do that now? So I think the, the challenge that the companies have is we understand the challenge, you know, it's, it's all about finances, right? So I think the challenge, so how do we mitigate that is, okay, maybe we have this together jointly as joint exercise with the universities and the industry, and they could provide internships and we could provide the content or some companies may decide to give an allowance, some, kind, or some companies may say, look, you're getting a training, but at the end of this period, uh, you know, as Madhu said, I think there is going to be a boom, right? Every, you know, a lot of companies are trying to develop e-commerce solutions. You're trying to integrate your supply chain. You're going to, you know, talk to your, you know, customers, integrate your customers, right? And moreover, I think uh, what is happening right now is even from the government side or the company side, how do we enhance this work? from home methodology, right? Do we really right. need to go to work, right? So if 50% yes. of your workforce can be working from home, right? Obviously you need to have IT solutions, right? Yes. For there'll be a lot of demand for these, whether it is companies, whether it is education institutes like us, we have invested heavily into our IT infrastructure and solutions because I, we know that this is the way to go, right? So in terms of, uh, you know, job opportunities, I don't think um, there's going to be an issue. There'll be a small, you know, probably, but I think, uh, but I think, you know, that will be, uh, you know, um, smoothed out. And I think there'll be more demand in time to come. Um, so um, anyway, you need graduates, you know, as an institute, why do we want to have this methodology and a lot of questions? I know even prayer and talk to me, talk to us and say, can't you wait another two months, three months? I say, why do you want to wait? You know, I want our graduates to be first out at the gate so that they are first in the line, right, to get the job. So I think that's the kind of attitude that we have. And anyway, you need graduates to rebuild the economy, right? You can't, without graduates, if you delay this, you're delaying the re rebuild the economy part as well. So overall, I think it is a challenge. Every challenge is an opportunity, right? If you look at that way, I think they have many opportunities and we are sourcing top-notch Sri Lankan and others from overseas to deliver lectures to our students. It, is, it has never happened before, but it was possible. It is this situation that you know, gave us that yeah. opportunity. Okay. So I'll stop there and maybe we can have a discussion. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Lalit. I think that that was inspirational in terms of education as well as uh, there's something else that I want to uh, surface, uh, Lalit, about you in the next round. I'll get that. But I, I think that was a very good answer in, in, in terms of private sector universities and in terms of uh, education is point of view. Uh, Mr. Disanayaka, uh, I think I, you can hear me. Uh, from uh, representing as an honorable secretary for the Ministry of Higher Education, Innovation and Technology, and also involved in a number of other initiatives and also being a government servant for many, many years from your history. 
how do you react to this as a government what is the government policy in supply and demand management how do you plan to uh, engage with the, the industry with the universities both private and and government uh, what what is the risk mitigation strategy what is your plan uh, from the ministry point of view i'm not asking a lot of details but do you have a plan and what is that plan all right uh, first of all let me thank uh, slashcom for inviting me at this um, very important forum and uh, i want to thank you for uh, Uh, particularly inviting me to join this uh, uh, great uh, opportunity of talking to a thousand odd uh, uh, enthusiastic young uh, people in this country uh, as we all know that you know we were just uh, it's a new government had been formed and then we were ready with uh, the manif- uh, the president's uh, manifesto you know where he was he promised the people that you know he will ensure that all these uh, a level <coughs> qualified students will be given the opportunity of uh, uh, some form of a, some form of a education so we <coughs> so we were in the forefront of you know how to organize and then facing that challenge and then um, then we ended up with uh, this covid 19 uh, uh, situation which led us uh, suddenly shutting shutting down the system and as you know the ministry of education uh, uh higher education uh, is okay, working with uh, the three segments one is the national university system where the state universities are and then we are working with uh, uh, slancy the the private uh, non state education institutes that is amounting to about 223 institutions and then we have another set of uh, universities which are state owned and we we compete like nsbm nibm and then uh, uh, and then uh, slt campus you know these uh, so there's all these we are representing entire higher education uh, segment and uh, so we immediately uh, uh, <coughs> took this uh, as a, a challenge that uh, we had to face and then uh, <coughs> so president from the top also president immediately formed a presidential task force on sri lanka's education affairs so when he was entrusted us with uh, to find immediate solutions for uh, all the approximately 6.5 million students uh, i am saying from the secondary junior secondary high secondary and then uh, university 6.5 million uh, people who are uh, not engaged in workforce but in the learning and to come up with uh, so um, i mean uh, the results were beyond our expectation like uh, others you know i mean <clears throat> Uh, we we were just uh, struggling how to uh, we put uh, uh, students into the engage engaging an uh, education some kind of education through uh, distant mode and then universities were the pioneers you know they i mean they took uh, um, immediately uh, activated their unutilized infrastructures and then uh, for luckily really we had this uh, uh, infrastructure but we were not utilizing uh, proper and uh, so um, uh, so the dr charles is uh, talking about uh, yeah, state university system and uh, uh, if if we take the entire university system uh, uh, as a today 65% of the total population is online and so this uh, so that's a significant size over there out there uh, have uh, not been able to reach due to uh uh um, uh outreach or they due to internet access and uh, devices things like that but uh, but for a sudden uh, uh, intervention like this achieving 65% of the school uh, the student communities uh, something we should uh, 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 admire and then private education you know it is also you know this different uh, place with the different uh, different line of uh, the progress but we immediately put everyone together now we have every day we talk about the progress and then we manage and apart from that um, i see that you know uh, this is the first time uh, we are working together uh, i mean earlier i was serving the secretary as a secretary minister of education and we were working on that silo and then and uh, private uh, international schools were doing their business and then uh, institutions are doing different but this uh, uh, task force put all of us together and we are talking now the uh, private universities state universities and then slashcom is helping us to um, get uh, the lessons learned from this uh, exercise to be introduced to the system so it integration system is supported by the industry um, uh, uh, so like others i am i'm joining the others uh, same uh, same we uh, uh, this is a just uh, a short uh, 
shocking shock that we are going to face. But you know, we we see great opportunities. You know, we in fact uh, uh, this next academic year students, we are uh, we will not wait till the university cycle starts uh, in the end of the year. But we are starting six months prior to bringing them to university system. We are starting them with uh, the. Uh, uh, this English program and IT programs uh, online and some of the uh, school centers we are opening and trying to get them uh, uh, to some practical so that uh, every university will be offered six months prior to formal university gathering you know they will be uh, getting ready for uh, required IT and other, other skills uh, so it's um, um, I, I'm glad that I'm, I'm uh, I gave I have given this opportunity with this environment so that you know I have a better uh, better footing to uh, take off you know. So Mr. Disan, I actually you said something brave. Uh, so because of uh, you said that previous department that it, uh, or the institute you work with had difficulty and now so with that brave statement I'm also asking a brave question from you. Uh, that is coming from the forum. In fact, uh, the simple question. Hmm. Are these private sectors and the, the government uh, institutes that you're working with, are they collaborating with you? They're asking yes or no? Yes. <laughs> There's a question coming. Yeah. And Dr. Mr. La Professor Lalit is there. He will I, I want to, can I say that I think the Minister, we are collaborating heavily. In fact, prior to this meeting also, we were discussing how things are and, uh, and how the education, Ministry of Education is taking decisions really fast now. We yes. want this system, the system that I want, that we have developed to be adopted by or to be accepted by the Ministry of Education. Um, traditionally, it would have taken ages, but he said within the next week, the, the solutions will be provided to us. So I think what, what we need is, you know, this kind of flexible, uh, outward looking organization so that we have the ability uh, or we are given the, you know, the, uh, the power to develop new things and, and those new things are accepted by, uh, you know, uh, the authorities. Absolutely. I'm, I'm actually, like, I knew the answer, but because it came from the forum, I want to make sure that it comes from the forum itself, the panelists itself. Uh, so um, I'm turning to you, uh, Hasita. I think now everyone is talking about, uh, from Madhu to uh, Professor Lalit Gamage to Dr. Charles to Mr. Dizanayak, and myself, we all talk about yeah, situation is really uh, opportunistic. Uh, even uh, we know that from the numbers itself, Sri Lanka is progressing. And Mr. Sanak, all ready to some of the leadership, you and, and the rest of the government, and also to the private sector, that how we handle this situation. But it means that that needs infrastructure. Like everyone said very clearly, two things. We need right infrastructure. We need people to have the skills. Now, I'll park the skill problem to a next round. But I'll go with the infrastructure problem. Hasita, it's not an easy thing, right? Everyone is demanding, everyone is asking, and everyone is saying it's Microsoft. You have to jump in and try to do everything free sometime uh, from, uh, from higher education. And also, I know that you go to schools and the normal education system as well. But particularly talking about higher education and private institutes, you're trying to be, uh, I think you're trying to these days, uh, Microsoft is having wearing a hat and, and with that hat, you have to do a lot of things free. And is it practical? Are you ready to do this? Uh, what is your commitment to Sri Lanka Hasita? Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, Arura, thank, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity, EDB, SLASCOM, and the panelists. Um, I think this is a great initiative to bring the entire ecosystem together. I mean, the academia, the, the officials like Mr. Dizanayak and, and yourself, Madhu, in the industry. And also the platform providers, the companies uh, like us who has been. So this is, um, okay, so can I also make a comment before answering your question, right? Uh, I think we've talked about the opportunity uh, clearly. Um, it's, it's not, a, and, the, and the country, I think we, uh, in terms of, uh, as a country, as individuals, we managed to, it's an opportunity for us to reset ourselves. Our perspective of life has changed, right? Perspective of work has changed. Perspective of the country, we're today proud that the resilience we have, and then we were not running about like headless chicken. We have a nice way of responding to something like this, right? And actually setting an example to the rest of the world, so to speak. So um, I think this is probably the, probably the 10th time this forum is hearing, but it's so much a, 
valuable quote from Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill, right? They never uh, let a good crisis go away. I, I think after the after the World War and the uh, during the World War, he said this comment, and we would like to kind of remind this to ourselves as a nation. I think after finishing the war, I would say we had an opportunity. We grabbed to some extent. I don't know whether we maximize it, but we have another opportunity after ten years exactly, right? And and I think like Madhu pointed out. I mean, the, how fast we can take this turn would define us as a nation, right? Uh, and I think that's where the great opportunity is. And that will, so when we look at as a company, uh, Satya, who is our CEO, who transformed the company within last five years, you know about that story. That's a, you know, another good session we need to have to figure that out. But it, I mean, as a as a country, as an organization, it does not change. It, it's all about the leadership we provide, and and I'm so happy that you know these leaders are got together here to provide the leadership to the people. I, I guess there is a fairly big forum after the five days of uh, events organized by DB and Stascom, listening to us to understand how bullish are we, where the opportunity is, and and that is this is all about leadership. We look at this in terms of digital transformation. I think Madhu uh, touched on it. You said that uh, COVID is a digital transformer, right? Uh, it is not the CIO, it's not the CEO, uh, it's well said. So we see um, this unprecedented challenge which we have, which kind of broken down the completely the supply and demand ecosystem from both ends. So as an organization, we feel when the world comes back to, we have a new word called new norm. This is going to get literally differently wired, right? People would look at the people, I mean, any organization today would be boldly look at making changes. You would be very worried that the unions and the employees and the customers and the partners will worry about this. Today, you are in crisis. You've got to change. And that's an opportunity to change, right? Same with our education system. Right? If, and, and, and let's look at when we come out of this, uh, where are we going to be in the ecosystem? So in terms of our, we, we need to look at what is relevant to the students who are today talking to us into the education system, right? Uh, I think Madhu and, and you can, um, Anura, give, probably kind of give, keep me honest here. We have been talking about a $1 billion IT industry. Uh, increase into $5 billion. And then we have been shifting that uh, uh, goalpost as we go through year and year. And we all understand the issues around that. We have a, a $4 billion, they are about uh, uh, income from the tourism, which is great, right? Which is completely impacted. And I think we will, we, we will fastly go through that uh, turn, so to speak, to get it back. Uh, then we have $5 billion on apparel. But net inflow from that 5 billion, because we probably export 75 to 80% uh, because we don't have the raw material. So it's, it's a net of a billion dollars or whatever net income. Agri, three to three and a half billion dollars. Where is our biggest income? I think the people who are students who are listening should hear this. I keep, I make an opportunity to point it out, right? Eight billion plus of our income, which we use to run this country comes from those million odd workers, mostly under very unacceptable conditions working in those middies and the rest of the country. That's $8 billion, guys, right? So we, as an opportunity today, I'm saying it can't be done tomorrow, but do we teach the right thing? Do we teach, do our students, the university students learn the right skills? Because why is we saying, we are still exporting people for the low skill job. Madhu is going out to India to recruit people. Maybe Aruna, you are looking at India because you don't have one capacity, no the required skills. Why is that gap? And I think this forum is here to fill that gap. So that's my opening. In terms of investment, I would say for a company like us, we've been, let me be very frank, right? Why would we do? I mean, we didn't just wake up to the COVID then started uh, talking to Mr. Disanayak and got this uh, uh, MOU going with education. We've been doing this for the last 15 years, 16 years. Why? IT is all about education, right? We said education is the biggest equalizer earlier. You can add IT to that. 
IT is going to be the biggest equalizer. In material of which part of the country you come, whether it's east, west, north, south, or wherever, the poorest places, if you are, have education, if you have IT around you, you're going to make it, right? That's my message to the team. Now, why we as an organization would invest? Of course, we have a duty to put back. But if you look at it as a, we are as good as the country we are operating in, right? No, so Sri Lanka, to give you an idea, for the emerging markets, we do, Sri Lanka, Microsoft Sri Lanka is a showpiece or a center of excellence, right? So we export people. We have a great partner ecosystem, like so Virtuza or, or Pixel, or I can name so many, right? We are exporting IT. So we are as good as the economy we are operating in for a, for a company, right? So it makes a sense for us to invest in this infrastructure. And this time was our time. And I, I thought, it, you know, we did our best, I think, uh, with, the, with the help of um, the Ministry of Edu Higher Education as well as Ministry of Education. We managed to kind of deploy this platform. Already the schools are using it. That's just one step, right, to make sure that you're... But I think the bigger discussion today should be when we make those investments, how do we recoup that for the country, right? How do we get the education, right education going this, the, and, and change that equation from the people, unskilled workers going to Middle East or people who are kind of now getting, getting into apparel industry or a, a, a boy who gets out and drive a three-wheeler, how can we change the education system and educate them right through our channels and expand on that to a jumpstart a new economy. That's where our biggest opportunity is that, right? And as an organization, we have also shown the world that we can, we can be a very reliable nation, right? Whether it's in April or whatever, we, we managed to take controls to our hand. So that's a great strength, I think, when you, when you look at IT exports and all that, right? That's a huge strength. Because our resilience, our BCP plans, you know, we, we've been able to do that. And in apparel, our advantage has been the quality, niche in quality. We can really play that, that game. So coming back, investment from our side is made for a reason for our organization. But I think it is an important opportunity we have. I don't think we should lose any amount of time grabbing this opportunity. Uh, we can be another Israel. I mean, it's 7 million people, right, who were pushed to a corner after the World War II and look at what they have done. And, 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 and we, any country have that opportunity, I think we should go and grab it. And my, I have no worried about the jobs. There will be enough jobs in IT, in local and export industries. There will be enough companies who want to uh, re, uh, reinvent themselves around IT, and there will be enough Right? And if we can get together, we can kind of do this internships and all that what is needed for students. Bigger worry I have is how fast we can change our system. How do we change our intake to, to, from, a, from our arts to, uh, to more towards STEM and more towards uh, this thing? Those are the real things. And organizations like us or Google or AWS for that matter, anyone who is recouping this benefit of it, right, would be very interested in investing in this country on, on commercial reason. And I think that's where we need to look at in terms of investment. Thank you very much. Thanks, Asita. Thank you for, for giving the uh, explanation and also uh, the preamble to that and then also being honest with uh, why the reasons for investing here. I think those who are listening now uh, on the first round, or if you missed anything on the first round, the first round questions were more uh, targeted at understanding the problem and whether as, as an undergraduate or graduate or passing out student or, or uh, someone seeking admission for the university system, should I worry to undertake ICT degree? Now, the first round very clearly from industry, from infrastructure giants like Microsoft, from ministry and government, everything uh, combined and the private education system, all combined ends is firstly, no, there's no such worry. In fact, there is, a, there is a big demand, there's a big opportunity coming. So those who are watching, students and parents, your worry has to go away right now in the first round because that's the whole idea of making sure that to show that how much we align as industry, university system and government. The, with the beginning of the second round, uh, thanks to all panelists on the first round, the beginning of the second round, I think I take that Madhu's part that I parked earlier, lifting the curve. 
uh, he was talking about the race drivers and how do you take the opportunity. I think that's that's exactly what I wanted to start this round with. Uh, because if you look at most of the people, uh, if you look at the stock exchange, even, even they have shut down a couple of days, but there were some statements on LinkedIn and different social media saying, look, if you want to buy stocks, this is the time to buy. The same day, uh, drifting, drifting the curve uh, or the drifting the, the car thing comes in because these are golden opportunity not only for students and the graduates to look for jobs. And I feel this is a golden opportunity because of the infrastructure and a lot of free things provided, even to do the innovation. Uh, to give an example, in the 2002 recession time, a personal example of mine, I can remember, or a little bit of recession uh, compared to uh, actually having the uh, snowball effect coming from 1998 time. And that was the time that it started, started and the start of I work, we built the product for two years. When, when we started this 2002 towards the end, we went massive change and started a big company and actually served one of the largest global telco providers. I won't mention the name. It's a, one of the largest ones. Uh, Madhu, you know this story, right? So that was an opportunity how we can take. So those who are listening and watching, it's not only for studies, it's not for only for waiting in the university system. Like uh, Professor Gamage said that there are opportunities, incubators created, the infrastructure created. These are also golden opportunity for students, for you, for parents to influence your students or your children to start thinking something out of the box. Because Sri Lanka, like uh, Hasid said, I mean, if Israel can do it 7 million, why can't we do? They are, they are, they are, they are providing 80 countries for military to all the innovations to AI. So why can't we do, right? With that entry, I'm, I'm turning to you, Madhu. Now we have 150,000 workforce and all of us talked about and all of you talked about, well, we need more. Despite the pandemic, despite this short to medium term impact, you need more. Madhu, we have 150,000 workforce today. So how do we skill uh, from industry point of view, how do we build this rapidly? Uh, what is our commitment? Uh, and and you're one, we are the biggest Sri Lankan and one of the largest companies in the region. What is the industry and your commitment, Madhu? How do we do this? Yeah, so let me kind of share a few thoughts, right? I think the, the first and foremost, you know, you know, going beyond the jobs a little bit. And I think this is a tremendous time to learn anything, right? Whether it's uh, learning IT or science or photography or how to paint to, uh, you know, do yoga or whatever else that you want. There, there is a tremendous amount of learning available now, literally free, right? And oh, if it's not, it's very cheap, right? You know, I was looking at a Wharton uh, uh, digital transformation course, right? It's coming at like $2,000, right? If you had to travel there to do that and, and do all, it would have cost like a easily, you know, 30, uh, 20, $30,000 uh, uh, thing that will come to that, right? So, so there's so much opportunity to learn and, and really uh, uh, something we all should embrace, right? And I think it's the, it's, um, uh, Bill Gates, who said uh, that in uh, in online learning, everybody has a front seat, so uh, front seat row in the class, right? Because you are really everybody's get full attention, right? So, so that the, the second part is that, right? The first part is there's tremendous amount of learning. We should go and embrace that. It's it's the people who take the initiative. The second part is really going online can help us accelerate. Uh, uh, and increase the capacity, right? Not only, you know, uh, Lalit talked about and Dr. Charles talked about, uh, uh, Mr. Desana talks about how the education system has ex adapted online learning very rapidly uh, and, and very quickly to teach the kids who are already in there. Now think about with that capability, I think you can easily expand our university education to 20, 30 more percent more people, right, with the same capacity. Now you have a lecturer who's sitting in and teaching, whether it's teach 10 people or 20 people or 200 people, it's the same effort, right? And then really, if you kind of figure this out properly and, and build it, now all of a sudden, we can have a mixed mode education, you know, you can't go fully online and I don't think you can completely do a degree 100% online just yet, but I think we can very easily, uh, you know, if not uh, double, but at least 30% university capacity can be increased. That has been one of our challenges, you know, for many years, there are enough and more people who are passing A-levels qualified to go to university, but we don't have the capacity, right? And that's why a lot of the 
institutes like SLIT and others have come in to kind of address some of that stuff. But now all of a sudden think about, you know, if you're bringing, you know, 30,000 kids into a uh, uh, university system, you know, next year we should bring 40,000 people without doing anything significantly more, right? So I think this is a fantastic opportunity for us to expand our edu education to a broader group and, and to uh, Anurais, to your point, uh, you know, create more opportunities for people to go higher value things that Hasita was talking about, right? Instead of doing low case. So that's the second biggest thing. I think it also creates uh, uh, new ways of uh, uh, employment. You know, we think about gig work, where freelance work, as the more the world is open to now working uh, from anywhere, uh, you know, now whether you are doing a job, uh, if you're doing a job from home in the US, right, that same job can be done by somebody from home in Sri Lanka, right? And it says no need for now to be bounded by the geographic boundaries, right? And these trends were happening before slowly. And what COVID has done is accelerated that, right? So you now really online learning get accelerated, online jobs get accelerated, right? And real time learning get accelerated in, in your, even when you have a job, how do you reskill, upskill? So there is a, I think there is a tremendous opportunity for us to expand and also to go upskill and go to the, the next level. And I think, uh, I think what is really important is, I think what uh, in, in a crisis like this is what, uh, uh, what Charles Darwin said, right? It's not the strongest who would survive this. It's uh, the uh, species who's most adaptable, right? So we really have to think about how are you adapting, right? How are you really changing your ways of work, whether as an individual or whether as a university, whether as a company, whether as a collective, right? As a country, how do we adapt to this, right? I think we have give, been given a fantastic opportunity. I think we have to think about how we adapt as an individual, as a, as a country uh, together. Thanks, Madhu, for a great point. First is about learning anything right now free, I guess. I think I would not hesitate to say about the free because it's, I mean, no price, most 99% of things. And secondly, you said about uh, the taking to the next level. Now, taking from that and also what Mr. Disanaki, you said earlier, it's, you said also the similar thing that, you know, it's time for us to build more capacity uh, and, and, and we can create that industry bigger because Madhu uh, and, and, and we were struggling for many years, maybe more than 10 years to increase our capacity as IT industry because firstly, we want to get the opportunities here. Secondly, that we want to increase the GDP of the country. Now, Mr. Disanak, turning to you and, and taking from that point, Madhu also said that when you come to building the capacity is all about how we are prepared from particularly from the education system uh, and, and to cope up with these demands. From ministry and government policy point of view and upskilling these graduate workforce, you need the e-learning capacity, uh, not just the literacy, but the illiteracy, I would call it. So how much of first you think that how much of what percentage of higher education is online today? How can we increase this? Because all talk about increasing capacity. Are you, are you ready to cope up with that? Do you have programs? Um, and, and also the other side is when you come to lecturers and, and the teachers, how can we upskill them? Because that's a big problem. Mr. Desan, I go to you. Right. <clears throat> um... Yes, uh, if we just take this academic year, we are about to start the academic year uh, some in October. Uh, generally, the you know, this, uh, normal years in the last year, we have taken 32,000 32, students to the public university system. Uh, out of 180,000 who qualify the advanced level uh, uh, examination, and uh, with this new adjustment, that is, uh, we are not, uh, as you know, that we are, uh, we are, we will not be able to uh, transform within such a short period, totally for uh, online. We have a blended, we are offering blended uh, education system, uh, program for this academic year, and then uh, already we have planned and we have identified from each university. Uh, the ex expanded uh, number of students uh, to be taken from this, this this particular academic year, and which uh, is amounting to seven thousand five hundred additional uh, capacity will be built immediately with the with October intake. So that is almost forty thousand uh, thirty eight thousand to forty uh, thirty nine thousand will be accommodated. And then with this uh, this year's uh, all level examination results, what we are planning this this uh, 
the exam to be sit and then you know immediately after the examination before coming the, the results so anything we'll be launching this uh, a six months uh, uh, there's a english language skill program with vendor with uh, it program uh, so that uh, uh, the students uh, who are waiting for the results will be engaged uh, through distant mall that is one and then uh, uh, this open university uh, a system uh, where the we have this arm of open university we have the distant learning mode then we uh, we are working with uh, where the product line you know different products will be coming different uh, menus will be offered uh, and they are working on it and we are, we are we intend to uh, expand the percent 40000 uh, 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 um, student capacity of the open university system to 100000 so this this is uh, i'm talking of this this coming academic year uh, so these these are very promising numbers, and then we are we are we are really willing to work. And then uh, with the private university system, uh, um, uh, the every year, uh, while the university uh, local university system is absorbed by thirty-two percent, twenty uh, twenty-two thousand people goes abroad uh, for higher education, and then approximately twenty uh, uh, five to twenty-seven uh, to universities, about twenty-five thousand uh, will be joining the. A non-state sector university system. Uh, so that capacity of uh, uh, non-state sector university systems capacity from uh, 25,000, we are we are hoping within three years to increase to 60,000. So next year we are thinking, you know, the the, the system will absorb uh, uh, additional uh, of, uh, because there's a lot of infrastructure support they need. You know, uh, they, some of the universities are not really geared and invested on. Uh, learning management systems and things like that. So we are hoping that they will absorb around uh, seven to eight thousand new. And then uh, people, uh, dynamic people like uh, um, uh, Professor Lalit Gamage and uh, uh, you know there's other other people. Now we are working on the returnees from these uh, overseas uh, education. You know the seventeen thousand people uh, students who had were studied overseas had come back and coming back. So uh, for some for immediate. Uh, Years, you know, we are now working with this. Uh, you know, system is identifying the number of credits and you know how to uh, link them with uh, low, our you know say, private universities or to link with the the, the, the universities that they, they are working uh, to get their credits. So these are some some work that we are working with the uh, private universities, uh, you know, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Higher Education. So in numbers, you know, this there will be significant number uh, will be absorbed. Uh, 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 and increased. So, Mr. Disanak, uh, so what I'm hearing is that all great news in terms of capacity, but in terms of the infrastructure or, or, or to the get to the learning systems, I heard that also you said learning management system. I'm, I'm really, really happy to hear from a kind of, you know, uh, secretary that, uh, honorable secretary that, that you are fully aware of that. So, are we as a government ready to, you know, go and gear up with those and are we, are we looking into that? Are we still researching or we are thinking about it? Right. Okay. Now, see, uh, 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 this there's some uh, huge capital capital infusion have to be done, right. and uh, so uh, we have two. Uh, one is uh, immediate. The other one is the medium term investment plan. And uh, already yesterday, we had the final rounds of discussion with uh, uh, Asian Development Bank and World Bank, and. Uh, uh, what 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 they do is you know they are restructuring the ongoing projects that they are taking some money out and giving to us uh, to you know and so the, this uh, uh, this afternoon uh, we were uh, uh, having a zoom meeting with manila adb headquarters and you know diverting some funds to uh, improve some of the infrastructure so there so immediate yes. things uh, will be coming up and then long term plan you know we uh, we are working with industry and uh, Slashcom is uh, helping us and then uh, uh, and uh, uh, um, uh, uh, the IT man uh, device manufacturers companies and networking companies we are all they are all helping us to develop the the proposal uh, and then uh, we are hoping to submit the proposal to president the little deadline president has given us is uh, to submit the proposal by the second uh, week of June so that will help Very us fast. to secure uh, the medium term investment plan you know fantastic um, all great news i'm quite sure the all the, the, the students or parents watching this must be fantastic news uh, thank you so much mr disana um lali professor lali gamage i just um, i wanted to ask you two uh, quick questions 
one is uh, to get this future ready workforce as a private sector university and one of the leading educations uh, taking your ikta and other hats away but particularly on the education side hat are you are you ready to to gear up this challenge and workforce and the skills do we have the right skills because the skills today may not be the tomorrow skills example just pure software development versus ai or things like rpa there are skills differences happening so are we ready to take this challenge and as a as a private uh, university head are you ready uh, number one number two is coming from the the forum a question to you i think is appropriate uh, have we done enough research to decide what should be the content and how should we deliver this content uh, through the uh, learning management systems like to you okay so i'll uh, thank you so i'll ask the first question it's always the responsibility of an uh, um, um, of an institution to produce high quality relevant graduates right if your graduates particularly if you are from the non state sector right fee levying uh, institution if you do not produce quality graduates they will not be employed and there won't be any new students joining right so so that so that whole cycle takes care of them but what do we do right i think a lot of people think that advancing knowledge learning you know uh, classroom learning you know getting material from a book or from internet or whatever the means so advancing knowledge that you know that that itself is you know full education but in my opinion that is about you know 60 to 70% of education right the balance part comes from other skills you know these are the the graduate attributes that we talk about so the balance part is ability to think right ability to communicate and ability to integrate let me explain that a little bit right ability to think is you learn something in the classroom or however right and how do we apply this knowledge right to a real world problem and when you try to apply that knowledge to a real world problem you will see that you don't have enough knowledge you need to go back and learn right it is not just one way now you ha you have the urge to learn you so you go back and learn right so this way some sometimes when you try to do this you what you have learned may have become irrelevant so you may have to unlearn some of that stuff and relearn so this whole process continues and you become you know as you said future ready or relevant current graduate right or pro professional why i say ability to communicate in you know in, other than the obvious that is you know you need to communicate what you have developed and so on right to all stakeholders but communication is a two way process you need to be able to absorb new material you, right so that is also communication and you also learn by integrating with the society you know in order to develop solutions that are relevant and applicable you know appropriate you need to be fully integrated with the society so that is if you have those skills in addition to what you have learned right yep you become a you know relevant future ready graduate right um so remind me the second question was second question. Uh, coming from uh, the forum they asking uh, now when we speak about learning management systems have we done enough research to build the content that okay. should be no, i think i think i think it's a very good question um, we have a actually um, separate department right before lecturers develop content uh, they have to go through a process right how to retain what is delivered so traditionally if you deliver something you know if the retention is less than 10% so there are techniques to improve the retention of the listener of the material that you deliver right. so that training process happens and we mm -hmm. continuously take down so we have a quality assurance process right we have thousands of uh, lectures and there is a team that is going through all these lectures and says that okay this lecture is not good you have to take this lecture down and redo it so that is the process that we adopt to make sure that i mean this is audio quality video quality material you know presented all that is taken into consideration when we develop content 
Right. right. Uh, to what Professor Gamage was saying, I, I, I think this is probably one industry where the education system and the industry works so much hand in hand. I think you know there's a constant dialogue. There's a, a lot of collaboration on curriculum, uh, less collaboration on teaching, internship <laughs> of students coming out. I, I think is is probably one of the highest in any field. I think right. So. Absolutely. I think that's really something that I've seen over the years that uh, yep. lecturers are very passionate and the, the students are very passionate, the industry is very passionate around education, right? And I've seen this in the days of the public or any, any type of education system we have in Sri Lanka. We are so blessed to have those uh, educators and the professors and the lecturers who are very passionate about teaching. Mm -hmm. so, so if I may add that, I think that industry university working together is very, exactly. very crucial because I was talking about, you know, going back to my earlier point, developing, you know, solutions that are relevant and, you know, appropriate. That's, that's right. So how do we get that? How do students get that knowledge? How do they know that what they are developing is relevant? That, you know, that comes from, you know, by spending time in industry you know, doing internship, doing training and industry people working on various committees of the university. So this interaction is very, very crucial, right? Yeah. Thanks for bringing up that. Point to Arab, if you don't mind, one second. There's a yeah, sure. great quote I thought would be useful for our audience, what uh, Professor Gamagi was saying earlier, right? Uh, this, this quote is from uh, a futurist called Alvin Toffler, very famous futurist. And uh, he said the illiterate of the future is not the people who can't read or write, it's the people who, who can't learn, unlearn and relearn. Right? It's about you know, in a continuous flux, how do you learn and adapt, right? The things are changing so fast. It's very important that we take learning not in the university only, but as a lifelong skill that uh, you embrace, right? That's why it's, I think, uh, a very important thing that we are talking about. Thank you so much, Madhu. I think that's... Uh, uh, Unlearning, I, I think I believe personally also, Madhu, unlearning is the most difficult thing a human being because that's that's a very difficult thing and, and that's a very true statement. And going back to you, uh, Professor Gamaki and Madhu both, uh, I was talking to Mr. Dizanayak on this week and I was just confirming that how much of industry uh, kind of um, industry university boards that are kind of companies are taking part, the career fairs, all of that. No other industry we have seen this kind of collaboration. So I think it's a golden opportunity for us to relook at our content, how we deliver and better to suit the future. I think that's the bottom line. Um, I'm, I'm turning to you, Dr. Charles, going to the uh, final round on, uh, on this, uh, this, this rounds to you. Uh, when, when you look at the government university system in terms of uh, funding and getting these things in place, I know, uh, I, I, particularly from uh, Jackna as well, uh, from a distance from Colombo. Uh, how do your university system see this? How to solve this? Because do you have the right resources? Do you have the right? Um, the reason I said Jaffna is sometimes you, it's a distance. You don't know how many capacity you have for, in terms of lecturers as well as well as the resource persons to deliver courses. Do you have the right kind of capacity? Do you have the right funding? Do you have the right support? From the industry as well as from the from the the, the government institutes. Yeah. Uh, um, so in terms of support, say we have uh, adequate support from the government, from the industry. Uh, we are getting adequate support. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, the the funding uh, we need to have. Uh, we need uh, more funding say, due to this uh, uh, the, the the lapse of these uh, thirty years of. Work. Uh, there was uh, a con considerable effect on the uh, of the university. Um, we have to think about the present situation and the present situation. Uh, the, the the funding should be directed towards the the implement the um, e learning uh, mechanism, uh, both uh, towards the students as well as the uh, the teachers. The students need to be uh, equipped with um, basic um, equipment to consume online materials uh, to engage the online learning as well as uh, the teachers to deliver say at the moment say teachers can uh, return to the university so they can do it from their offices it's not an issue now um, 
but we need to have some sort of a, say um, special uh, equipments for the uh, online learning and um, uh, these facilities we can think of as a say whole it's say not um, so for example this uh, zoom facility we are providing to all the universities so it was um, acquired by, by the learn say the learn you may uh, know about this learn is a consortium uh, owned by all the universities and um, they are looking after the, the IT services especially the internet uh, traffic say it's uh, handled through the learn so we have a very good uh, internet connection to the university and uh, there's no issues with that and uh, this service zoom we acquired in uh, as a grant uh, last year say and uh, it was not too uh, and, uh, now you can use say uh, during the 9th 12 period it's very hard to find a slot to uh, conduct a, a zooms uh, meeting so um, this type of um, initiatives can be done say for example uh, one more thing is this uh, uh, Search journals um, as a country, we can uh, think of obtaining the whole research journals for all the universities. Uh, developing contents, uh, e-learning contents, um, uh, adequate from, from especially from the industry perspective, and uh, sharing it with all the universities. So these uh, uh, can be looked into the, the funding, and uh, these fundings can be. Um, improve in, in many many ways as uh, honorable secretary said uh, the starting the um, university entrance uh, from the, the day they have got selected we can start the online learning um, especially the english uh, communication skills it and other uh, skill development activities students can engage uh, if they need some sort of a training to start with they can uh, we can uh, do it from the regional universities uh, any students selected for any universities, they can go to the nearest regional university, get this basic training, and they can start uh, learning from the first day of uh, once they got selected. And this, uh, once uh, we we have developed an adequate um, learning, it can then be used for uh, for various purposes, as uh, as the secretary said. Uh, we can um, engage with more students, say external students. Uh, we can uh, deliver the content to external students uh, to improve them uh, in their quality. Uh, so as Hasita said, we can improve the um, levers uh, to some good level so they can um, look and going for the basic ones. Yeah, so what I'm hearing, is, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Charles, from you is that, yes, we have the right level of industry support and, and the tools. And, and I think uh, looking, I think you're looking at increasing the numbers and the capacity and the learning systems, you need to develop the content. But I'm sure that what, what I heard was that working with the ministry that you will be able to do that. So there's no roadblock right now. So That's we are, right. say the academics are also in the learning curve, say we, this right. learning method is, says, uh, for many, it's a new, new initiative. So they are also learning and uh, so in, in the coming coming months so they will be able to get pro produce better learning content a lot of unlearnings and learnings here as well <laughs> uh, yes. i'm turning to the yeah so madhu yes if i don't mind if you don't mind if i had a quick point maybe this is a this is probably some of this is already happening now every university is kind of creating content and trying to go online right and i think we also have a tremendous opportunity to collaborate right if you are you know if SLIT is teaching AI you know it's the same AI that we will teach in every other university right you know one good thing about IT technology is that whether it's you know taught in Harvard or Sri Lanka or India it's the same content right the same uh, uh, so if we can really maybe look at more systematically doing that I know some universities are already doing that I know SLI is doing that opening up their curriculum teaching uh, yeah. this way, we can probably accelerate we can get the if i just stay with the ai example get the top three uh, professors in ai in the country together and then build one content that can be used by any university right and maybe at least for a percentage of stuff we should be able to think about uh, accelerating that everybody instead of everybody trying to build the same content everywhere there might be something i, yeah, I, I, I think uh, 
practicality part of that is now if you look at any foreign university if you look if you're delivering some doctor or professor someone's book the electronic content is used in the system right doesn't matter which university the the lecturer or the instructor they call it they use the same content e-content produced by the whoever the author so i think taking your point what is the difficulty and roadblock for us to get together and develop the content that is required and and make that ebook that's your question I guess. that's right and more than ebook you know how do we get our best professors absolutely yeah that's it right? in front of the whole country instead of just maybe in one university a bunch of people right so you know everybody get the best lecturers best professors whichever university they are in this is uh, this is a wonderful idea and i mean i'm posing i'm i'm, I'm asking uh, um, uh, dr lalit gamange professor lalit gamange and others you know let's let's uh, talk about this point because this is this will be great uh, it will be great opportunity rather than uh, trying to do separately but uh, trying Absolutely. to get uh, all this uh, best content maybe slashcom can uh, also just uh, help us on just uh, maybe cooling these things definitely yeah. we take that yes i think it's a great idea and i think it's not just local universities and i think what we are trying to build is you know we are in fact this initiative this initiative has kind of taken place now so we have built something known as honorary professor network so we have contacted you know um, sri lankan professors who are working in top notch university worldwide uh, to come and work together and this has created you know more opportunities for us to you know uh, tighten that network and get and to get their services so in fact uh, this is happening and i'm glad that madhu you know brought this up and on, on, on top of it say uh, on just only this uh, the, the content we need to develop mechanisms uh, to incorporate this uh, content into our teaching learning uh, curriculum Uh, and on especially the evaluation method say we we can't rely say we can't stay with the the, uh, the old fashion paper based uh, evaluation method so we have to move on uh, to strategies um, incorporate learning content from other uh, academics or even say uh, there are courses and there are lots of awc dedicated or lots of uh, online um, courses providing institutions uh, if funds available we can get those content as well uh, to incorporate into our curriculum yeah dr charles actually just to close that close the loop if we can build the best content like all of us talking and making that available for every university and if we have a difficult teaching that content what makes it different with this technology we can do it remotely if one of the sri lankan doctors or professors living in whatever the country the other side of the world these are technology we can give them the course online so i think i think we've got to a great point uh, mr disana we need to i think slash com and we need to talk about this outside the offline this this topic uh, coming to the uh, last question of, of the of the whole uh, forum which is getting to 5 minutes before we wind up the forum uh, as it uh, it's a uh, it's a limited time i'm sorry that but i wanted to ask you Uh, as a giant in the industry giant in the infrastructure giant in, in the technology microsoft um, how do we help to build these skills that we talked about all this time the the building our teachers the education system what expertise we can access from microsoft how can you help uh, as a giant uh, to to this 22 million population great thanks uh, and 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 good points right i mean the the learning is not a one time thing is a lifetime thing right i i think it's a is a is a behavior we could inculcate among all of us right not only students so let me be very specific so that uh, we can actually follow up this and also people as in the students and the parents who are listening would exactly know where to go how to get engaged i talked about a few areas we are engaged now and i maybe maybe is uh finally uh, in a in a formal way now we are providing which was which is available for students anyway but uh, our our software for remote learning right uh, or for that matter so that is the office 365 zoot for education is given free of charge now what ministry of education and ministry of higher education has done it is that it has they have made it secure and more organized right you know it's not having the software tool which makes the difference how we organize ourselves 
to utilize that tool as an education tool. That's number one. So, uh, Dr. Charles, um, I think you were talking about getting grants to buy software. You don't need to do that anymore. It's free, right? Number two is a platform. Uh, today, you don't need, I mean, if you're talking about IT, you don't need to buy hardware and do that, right? Whether it's us or any other large cloud company has many programs where for university students, anyone who into research, for example, GitHub is a, is a part of Microsoft, the largest uh, developers network in the world, right? We have programs which we can land in universities and uh, uh, vocational institutes and schools for that matter. So we give the compute and the know-how, all that, right? So you don't need to invest in that anymore. We can bring that free of cost in a programmatic way, right? Number three, so that's the platform, right? You, number three is the certification, right? So we, we have, like you said, because you can, I mean, get the universities and anyone, we can, we can bring in the industry flavor, what is in demand, what's the latest technology, uh, you know, it's, it's just a matter of be organizing a um, large scale event at a university level or at an industry level, uh, uh, at a uh, pan university level to make sure this. In, and then we also have um, skill, uh, the certification programs, meaning now these are as professionals, you need to go and do that. So you're through your workplace or you're through university, maybe in a subsidized scheme we can come up with a program to get your certified. Those are the four areas. But the most important thing, I guess, which I brought out is what is relevant when you go out to work is how you can apply this, right? And then and, and, uh, Professor Lalit pointed out that, you know, thinking and adapting, et cetera, et cetera, agility. Uh, Imagine Cup, maybe you would have heard. We have had Imagine Cups running in Sri Lanka for a long time. And uh, some of you who are students and you know who is on the panel would have experienced that. That's a great way of actually asking people to students think and improvise and solve a real time, real life problem. So we are now going one step before. If you look at it, uh, I think we posted it uh, with, the, with, the, with the minister, we launched Imagine Cup Junior. So you're not getting into universities only. We are bringing this to even all level A level students. Because this is a thinking where you say, hey, what are your problems? Can we get this problem thinking mindset? Because otherwise, you know, you can learn anything in under the world, but if you can't apply it, that's the problem. So those are the few areas. And, and I love the discussion that in the industry, um, uh, the, the academia and then uh, Mr. Disanaka said we will formally deploy that. We are more than happy to bring these five elements into, the, into a more programmatic way so that our students can continue to learn and our graduate can continue to professionally upskill themselves, which is the need of the hour. So I was very specific and, and these are very clearly pro programs we can bring it. It's a matter of we as a nation, we as a this thing. Because where, when you look at it, you just need a device, right? That device could be a mobile phone because you can learn from anywhere today. Or you just need, maybe we need to organize, get together. That's the biggest investment we can do for the country to provide subsidize or a loan scheme for a, a devices, right? Not to probably throw things free of charge because then you value the device, right? And then the bandwidth. I think uh, uh, if you have bandwidth, then software is not an issue. Platforms are not an issue. Knowledge is not an issue. And the education system we have today with all the people around the world helping us, the knowledge sharing is not an issue. So that's where I want to end up. Um, and, and we are committed to make sh making sure this happens in a pro uh, organized way um, uh, in, in this ecosystem. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hasita. I think I, I must confirm to the audience as well as uh, particularly Mr. Dusanayake, when we talk uh, on, on offline with Hasita, this is one of the questions I asked him and he was even giving commitment, even, you know, that time also, like bringing the expertise and helping at this time, like the AI type of technologies Madhu talked about. We know that the MASH and all the technologies are very, very high in Microsoft. So definitely Hasita was confirming and thank you Hasita for reaffirm that because that's a great opportunity for all of us. Um, and uh, with that note, I will go probably reverse order, Hasita. What's the takeaway message for the audience? Uh, give a quick takeaway message from this. Because uh, let, me, let me bring everyone to the live, real life. We were talking about, is there a worry? And, and we said, no, there's no worry. Actually, there's a great opportunity. 
do we have everyone ready? Well, we said we are not ready, but we are getting ready and we have plans. There's the government and the institutes and the private public as well as the industry. Are they getting together? Of course, this industry is very well working together. And more importantly, uh, ecosystem partner. I call you ecosystem partner because you have the, the infrastructure, the knowledge, everything. So entire ecosystem partners are ready to help us. Then the final question was, are we ready to take our intake more? Of course, with this learning system, we can do so. All in all, what I hear is that everyone is ready. So what is your take? What is the takeaway message you would like to give Hasita to the team? Then I go backward to the others as well. To the, yeah, to the I started audience. off, uh, I started off uh, talking about the opportunity. See, I think um, we have a massive opportunity. Let's look at 2030, right? We are in 2030 looking back, right? And I think as a, as a generation, as a country, as a nation, we have, if we throw away this opportunity, we should be looking at in 2030 and say, hey, in 2020, this happened to us, 2019, 20, whatever you call it. And this is how we use that opportunity to turn around ourselves as a nation, as individuals, as organization. And this is where we are in 2030. And I think that's what we should, as, as a team, uh, uh, look at it in a, in a little futuristic way. Don't get scared. The opportunities are everywhere. It's we improvise and figure out how to do that. And if we take that away, it's a massive opportunity we are throwing away. We have thrown away many opportunities we had in life. Let's get to 2030, right? 10 years down the line, maybe five years down the line, turn back and say, hey, we did really, really use this opportunity and grab it and deliver done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hasita. Uh, turning to you, Mr. Disanayaka, what is the take of a message to the audience from you? Uh, first, I will I, I join the question of Hasita, and then uh, this is the transformative decade that we uh, <clears throat> we have to face. And then, and uh, I'm so positive because uh, uh, for the first time, I, I see during my 30 year long public sector career, first time I see this opportunity of working together with the one one message uh, from the from the private sector and the industry and then uh, techni technological field and then and you don't see the the, the university system had the uh, state you know, system had been transformed into a different uh, attitudes and so this is a momentum that we have built you know and then and we know that uh, students are eagerly waiting for opportunities and uh, so this is the uh, the uh, the starting of 2020s uh, uh, new decade then I'm, I'm sure that you know with all this uh, uh, spirit uh, that we are working, you know, it will be a, 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 a COVID, uh, COVID will be a, a turning point for the nation, you know. Thank you, Mr. Dizanayaka. Um, Professor Lalit Gamage, what's your the takeaway message from you to the audience? Lalit? Yeah, sorry, thank you. Um, this is a great opportunity. You know, for the IT industry, I, I couldn't speak about, you know, the things that we are doing uh, through the ICT agency. But if you give me the opportunity, I just want to tell you that this is a great opportunity for us because uh, that, uh, His Excellency himself had been an IT professional and he places heavy emphasis on information technology. And that is why ICT agency is given a full mandate to develop the digital economy and the digital government side. So these will create large number of opportunities for both private sector and the educators, right? So my message uh, is actually, uh, you know, the traditional perception about teaching, learning, and assessment process has changed, right? And we all talk about, you know, this new normal, which is probably overused term now. But I'm thinking what is what is important for us is okay. We, Unless we define what this new normal is, right? We might settle into a normal that is not acceptable to us. So I think we have to work hard towards achieving what that new normal is. People will forget things very fast. Oh, we will go back to the original normal. So that is why I think we must not forget this. This is an opportunity. And if you are working towards a new normal, I think we have to all work together to achieve what that new normal is. Thank you so much, uh, 
Professor Lalit Damagi and uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Charles, uh, what's your takeaway message to the audience? Yeah, my message to the students, um, improve your self-learning capabilities. So, so that's uh, need to be uh, uh, going to be play a bigger role in your, in your learning. Uh, only way to improve it, say, by learning uh, by yourself and engage in the online learning, improve your learning capabilities. Uh, yeah, you need to be prepared. So you are the next generation who are going to uh, in this country uh, to face this, uh, the next, uh, say, uh, pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, say, you have to be face, facing it. Say, we will be older and uh, we may be in the backside. Uh, so that's it. Improve your self learning capabilities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Charles. Madhu, final uh, takeaway message from you. We are, we are at a curve, right? So my message is think like a race car driver. You know, put the pedal on the accelerator, drift the curve and, and seize the opportunity. Thank you so much, Madhu. And, and just to end up uh, this uh, forum, uh, first, may I thank you, uh, Madhu, uh, Mr. Disanayak, Honorable Secretary for Higher Education, Dr. Charles from Jaffna University, uh, Hasita from Microsoft, and uh, Professor Lalit Gamage from SLIIT slash ICTA uh, for participating in this very valuable discussion. And uh, to end up, I want to say a, a thing that, you know, people are talking too much about cricket, even this pandemic time, and that's great. People have not lost the momentum, but it's a 2020. Year 2020, like you said, Mr. Disanang, is a 2020, it's a small, short, short format game. We got only probably, uh, we don't have even 20 hours, we probably have about 10 hours to play. I think let's take the opportunity, let's drift the curve, let's take the, all the industry together. And this forum even took place remotely. And, and this, I think, I know the COVID has made a lot of damage to the whole world, but I think it did some good thing for us. And we made reunited to build our nation, reunited to build our infrastructure, reunited to build our capacity. So thank you so much again for organizers, Slashcom, uh, EDB, FITIS, and uh, the uh, ICTA, and also for the knowledge partners, Microsoft, Virtuza, Pixel, Minister of Higher Education, Technology, and Innovation, and University of Jaffna, and finally to the media partner, Financial Times. Thank you so much, all the listeners, panelists, once again, thank you so much for your time. Uh, stay safe and well. Have a great, fantastic weekend. Look forward for the next week and a great capacity building program within Sri Lanka. Thank you.